Welcome back to another Geometry Notes lesson. Um, I've been making this series that I've been putting in a playlist, Geometry Notes for Beginners. And today we're gonna to be looking at curves. And the idea here is to make this dancing little tentacle here with a curve. And the thing I'm gonna show you, it's really cool. We're gonna be using a cool, simple math operation. So as we increase the length of this curve, um, we're gonna dynamically increase the count of our curve so we don't lose any of our, um, our geometry density here. So we have a dynamic way of updating both the length of our line, our curve line here, and adding in um, segments dynamically. So it always has a high enough resolution as we're increasing the length. If that doesn't make any sense to you at the moment, don't worry about it, you'll get it as we're doing the tutorial. But yeah, the idea here is to learn how to utilize a curve in geometry nodes. If this is a little bit complicated, definitely go back into this course. Look at from the um, very first video where I teach more of the basic concepts so you can work your way up to understanding what we're about to do here. But this is all really simple, basic stuff, nothing too complicated. So let's jump into it and I hope you guys enjoy learning about curves in geometry nodes. So if a new scene opened up in Blender, let's select the default cube and let's go over to our geometry nodes workspace. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more space. And we're gonna come here and create a new network for the cube. And let's just call this um, curves, okay? And then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go search, and we're gonna type in curve space, and we're gonna type in line, okay? So we're gonna get a curve line, click on it. And then I'm gonna quickly go shift A search, and I'm gonna show you this one. I'm gonna type in mesh and then type in line and get a mesh line. Now these two can be used for very similar things, though there is a difference, okay? Um, so the mesh line here is mesh and it's gonna give you a count. So for example, you can determine the length, the start and end location of the um, line and you can uh, say how many vertices it needs to be made out of. But for our purposes, we're gonna be working with the curve line. Um, so let's just get rid of the mesh line. I just wanted to explain um, the difference. They look very similar, but they are used in different ways. So we're gonna take the curve line, and we're just actually gonna place it on top of here. So the curve line is going into the group output, as you can see. And the way this works is actually really simple. These numbers here, the start essentially tells you where it starts. So at the moment, X, Y, and Z is zero, because the start point of this line is zero, zero, zero on all axes. And then over here, it's zero on these two, but Z on the one. And that's why it exists one meter up on the one. So I'll quickly show you guys. I could come over here and if I mess around with these numbers here, you can see the start location now shifts and the end location as well, we can mess around with that. Um, so you kind of get the idea. It just tells us where in the 3D space it starts and ends. And at the moment, all this is is a line. It doesn't have any, um, vertices or uh, anything like that to it. So what we need to do, we need to create a resample curve. So we're gonna go shift A, search and go resample and get a resample curve and place it over here. And now this curve here is just telling us how the curve looks. This is telling it how many um, its points it's made out of. And what we have here is a count. So currently this is made out of 10 vertices. So if we now actually go up over here, we go shift A, search and we get a set position we place it on here. We can now take the offset and distort this. So let's go ahead and let's go use a classic distortion. So we're just gonna go here, offset, drag on that. Let's just type in noise and let's get a noise texture and we're gonna go with the color over here. And over here, it's gonna move everything up by 0.5 on every axis. That's just the way this works as we've discussed previously in the course. So we're gonna go shift A, search and just get a um, vector, vector math, place it on here, and we're just gonna go and subtract on each one, sorry, so subtract, on each one of these coordinates by a value of 0.5, and now it should kind of have it starting where it should, like so. And another thing we can do is we can go Shift D to duplicate this, place it over here, and we can also set it to scale. This way we have a way of increasing or decreasing the intensity. So let's make it 1.2 for now. And then what we wanna do is we want this to animate over time. And a simple way to do that is to take our noise texture, give it four dimensions by going to 4D. So now time is an extra dimension. And we can just take this 
W value, just drag on it and then type in scene. And let's get a scene time when working with frames. For every frame on our animation, we hit the spacebar, it's gonna update that value, but it's going a bit fast. We're gonna go shift A, search, and just get a math node. Place it on here, and if we multiply a value by anything smaller than one, it's gonna get smaller. So at the moment, it's 0.5, so it's still going quite fast, but if I make this 0.05, it slows down. And if I make it 0.005, it gets even slower. So let's just go 0.005. But one thing I don't like about this is it's doing it to everything. We want the base to kind of stay in place. So let's work with selections. And in the previous part of this um, series I've been doing, we did look at um, selections. Um, a few a few um, series ago. So we're gonna take the selection, we're gonna click and drag on it, and let's just go with the index. And remember the index here starts at zero and then works all the way up along each vertex as we go. So it's gonna be like zero, over here it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and so on with each of the vert vertex selections. So we're gonna take this and to tell Blender what one to use, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna compare. So we're gonna go shift A, search, and just get a math node. And we're gonna go over to the comparisons. Let's go greater than, and let's take the value here, and we wanna use an integer. So we're gonna type an in int, and get an integer, because we're, we're dealing with exact numbers here, whole numbers, not like 1.1 or 1.2. So for example, at the moment, zero is currently the selection, because it's comparing to the index, and it's saying, if it is zero, then that becomes the selection. So now we can see all of these verts here are moving except zero. And if we take this up now to one, it goes to the next vertex and so on and so on. So if we actually set this to like 10, all of them become like that. So now we can kind of go down here and we can control that selection. So I'm gonna go with a value of one here. I think that should work fine. But one thing that I'm not happy with here, what I really wanna change is this count over here of every sample. We want a bit more information. So. Something cool we can do here is we can go ahead, because like here, here's the thing that's gonna happen. Even if we give this like a count of 100, now it's got more um, verts here. But the problem is if we increase the length over here on the Z, um, it's gonna lose more of that um, kind of definition because it's still only working with a count of 100. So you want a dynamic way of updating this and the length at the same time. So we're gonna do a little bit of math. So let's actually come here, set this back to one on the Z. So let's actually go and separate the Z components. We're gonna click and drag here on the end value. Oh, actually we wanna separate the X components. So we're gonna go separate. We're gonna separate X, Y, and Z. And let's make sure the X is the one going in here. And then we're gonna go Shift A search and just type in combine and get a combine X, Y, and Z place it on here and let's make sure that the X is connected to the X. And then we just wanna take this vector here, drag it and just type in value. We're gonna get a value node. And then let's give it a value. So now you can see over here that it is, we have a way of controlling the length along the X. Now, I think we'll actually go with the Z, not the X. So we're gonna go with the Z. And let's just grab these two nodes and we're gonna go Control G or Command G, and then press Tab to go back out. Now I've created a little node here, and let's just go press N. Let's go over to our nodes, and let's just give this a label and call it Move Z, okay? Because we're only moving or scaling along the Z, okay? And now what we can do is we can take this value, and we can go Shift A, search, and get a math node, like so. We can take it and set it to multiply, and then take this value, place it into the top, and now we can feed this value into the count. And now if we go and duplicate this value, we can plug in a specific amount over here. So for example, let's say now that the value over here is one, for example. And by the way, we need to set this to multiply, not subtract, okay? so. It's gonna now, for example, over here it's one. So if we make this, for example, two over here, but at the moment you can't see anything because two is too small of a value. So let's go up to something like seven. And now we can see that's looking a lot better. So there we have it. And in fact, we can even go higher. We can maybe go something like 12. So now even if we give this like two meters, now it's actually 24 vertices making up this. So if we make it um, 10, 
Now it's 120 vertices making up this curve. So now we don't have to come and change the count every time we make it longer by using this math operation. For now, I'm just gonna set it back to two and I'll leave it at 12. Um, you can even go up to like 32 or something if you want it to be really smooth. Um, but one thing I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna come here to the scale and make it 0.4, just so it's a little bit smoother. And I'm gonna take the scale up here on the math, just so we got a kind of this nice smooth curve like that. So now we wanna do, we have a curve, we have it animated. Let's just maybe make it 0 0.01. So it's a little bit faster on the scene time over here. Let's now actually take this dancing curve and let's give it some um, geometry. So if we wanna turn this into mesh, we have to go shift a search and go curve to, and let's go curve to mesh, place it over here. And then you need to take a profile curve. We're gonna click and drag on this and let's just type in curve circle, get the curve circle. And now you can see this is what we have. So we need to take the radius way down Okay, and we can even take the resolution down to something like 12. But the problem with this is that we want it to not be like that everywhere, right? We want the, it to be big at the base and become more pointy towards the top. So there's actually a way we can do that. So let's move this all up. And before the curve to mesh, we're gonna go shift A search and we're gonna go set curve and get a set curve radius and place it in front of here. Now this is gonna allow us to manipulate the radius of the curve. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna actually take the radius over here and drag on it. We're gonna type in spline and then type in parameter. And we're gonna go with the factor. So it's gonna start here when I index at one or zero and go all the way up. And it's gonna become bigger as we go up to the top, but that's the opposite way around. So the way we invert this, so we're gonna go shift a search and just get a map range. And it's another type of math node, place it on here. And then whatever is zero, let's take that and represent it as one. And whatever is a max value of one, let's represent that as zero. So swapping it around. So now you can see we flipped that around. So whatever was zero here over here has become one. Whatever was a max value of one has become zero. Um, but you don't have to set this exactly to zero. I would probably take this 0 0.01, or maybe just up a little bit. So it's not too um, pointy at the top or maybe 0 0.01, something like that, yeah. Not completely closed. So now we have a little bit of thickness. We can also come over here to the min value here, increase that a little bit to make it thicker at the base. Okay, so that is pretty cool now that we have that down. I might just come over here to the set position, go down to the scale, and just not make it quite as intense, something like that, there we go. And now we have this fancy dancing curve. How cool is that? So um, if we go into wireframe, I'll quickly demonstrate. You can actually see here now, if we come here to this value and we increase the length, it's dynamically adding in more of the count here on the resample. If we didn't have this happening, say for example, we only had like a count of 13, we can make this longer and longer, but it's gonna lose resolution. So using this math operation here with the count is really gonna help us dynamically control that as we're changing the size and the length of our dancing curve here. So I know this is probably more of an advanced part of the course, but this is all kind of really crucial stuff when you're learning geometry nodes. So this has been my introduction to curves in geometry nodes, something cool you can do with them. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next part where we'll be looking at the simulation zone in a blender.